All right, Bang Bang, welcome to the Dave Portnoy Show with Eddie and Company, presented by Trade Zero. Trade Zero, Eddie, I use it. Uh, I've just upgraded my system, so it's going great. It's it's in whatever day we catch me on our pen stock hasn't been killing it the last couple of days, um, so I haven't been on as much. I go on it a million times when pen stock's killing it. In fact, uh, the entire gambling space a little bit down, so I may buy some more. Who knows? Uh, but we have big news from Trade Zero. They're going to be giving five listeners a chance to win free money, and not just a few shares, a couple bucks, five grand. Five grand to five new customers who fund a new account. Go to tradezero.us slash Dave to enter. That's five grand, five new customers. I'll be announcing the first 5K winner on this show in a few weeks with four more to follow. Here's why you should move your account to Trade Zero today. 24-7 live customer service. Good luck getting that anywhere else. Multi-platform access trading from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. Also huge. Pricing commission free at direct market center access. Robust inventory for shorting. I'm not a big short guy. Conditional and range orders. Locate sellbacks. Initial account minimum, 2500 bucks. Don't just trade. Trade Zero. Again, uh, they're going to give... Listeners, this show, five people, five grand. That's real money. The 24-7 customer service, do not underestimate how important that is. I've been with, like, E-Trade. They're great. The second you need them, they disappear, and they play dumb, and they cancel your account. So if you're actually trading with real money, you need an account like Trade Zero. Again, initial account, minimum 2500 bucks. Five grand, that's generous. That's real money. Yeah, I don't know. And if the people who didn't make that five thousand dollar bet yesterday are crazy, but that's yeah. besides the point. It's real money. Yeah, uh, big show today. We're gonna start it off with an interview. Uh, we're coming in, old school Barstool guy, Jay Cutler. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I've ever communicated with him on a Barstool like pod or media. I met him. We've met. Like, he's the one of the first athletes I ever met. I've told the story a gazillion times. So it was me and Gaz at uh, Miami Swim Week way back in the day. Way back. Like, one of the first things, Sky Vodka paid us to go, like, document Miami Swim Week. And I think it was his girlfriend at the time, or maybe fiance, Kristen Cavallari, was, like, wearing this ice bikini from Sky. And me and Gaz were there. It's a big event, Miami Swim Week. Uh, swim week you know these big photogs the major cameras i'm there with paul doing the fucking camera following me and jay cutler's there and we're told in the beginning like don't talk to jay cutler he doesn't want to talk to anybody he's like you know espn's there he won't talk to him nobody and we're there for like an hour and suddenly <laughs> the people who hired us the marketing firm they're like almost with a quizzical look in their eye they're like jay cutler says the only people he will talk to here. Are you? He's like a barstool fan. So we went over and uh, hung out in his little cabana, and that was the first time I met Jay. And, but then he went on like KFC radio, and I think he said something to the effect like, "The only way I'd go on KFC radio is if Dave wasn't on it." I was like, "What?" Yeah, so I, I don't had know. that on my list here. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that was all about. But I've been a Cutler guy forever. Was uh, did were you aware before that that he was a stoolie? Before he said you no could clue. talk to you guys? No clue. Now, I there is, I don't know if there's back and forth. The story goes in the way I believe it. Greg Olson says he is stoolie number one, like in the NFL, right? And he played for the Bears. Cutler played for the Bears. So he, I believe, says he introduced Jay to it. I believe. Yeah. Well, Which we'll find out. Sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. So, yeah, I, I, and he's done stuff, KFC Radio. I know him and Dan became friends, and then maybe they didn't become friends because Dan, like, was in Chicago covering the Bears and Cutler was sucking it up. And then, you know, that's tough when you're, you're friends with the quarterback who's stinking it up, and it's like, what do you say? I don't know. I don't know how it went. Well, you know, oddly enough, like, the straw that broke the camel's back with them two was Dan was on a radio show here, and he said that he thought Dalton was better than Cutler, and now we have Dalton, so. Was, I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah. that was a straw that broke the camera. It is an interesting thing when you – and, and it, it's the old adage of – I remember when Bill Simmons was coming up and local Boston sports writers would be like, yeah, it's easy to do what he does. He's not in the locker room talking to these guys every day. Every day. You become friendly or you see them in the relationships. It's harder to criticize sometimes if you're not in the locker room. You know, you, you don't know them. But 
the personal relation. There he is, Hawaiian J. What's up? What's going on? How we doing? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good. These How many whole... podcasts do you have? Me personally? I mean, yeah. Two. I have this one and then I do like a TikTok one. How many do you have? Uh, just one right now. But I think I, I wouldn't mind having another one, I guess. What do you well, this is the first time well Eddie, Eddie's the have you guys ever talked, Eddie and Jay? Yeah, he came on Redline Radio like a month ago. So you've done right. you you've done it all. Let's just start right off with it. I have a question. The very sure. first thing you ever did, I think, with Barstool way back in the day was KFC Radio. Yeah. And you made a point on KFC Radio where you're like, I'm not going on KFC Radio if I'm on it. Did I say that? Yeah. Why did I say that? I don't know. What did you do to me? Nothing. Nothing. I, you, b before you got on, I just retold the story of how we met, which I don't know if you remember the first time. It was at the Sky Vodka like swimsuit party in Miami. You were there with okay. Kristen. She yeah, was like, yeah. yep. She was like, the, and we were hired by Sky Vodka. And everybody leading up to it's like, don't talk to Jay. He's like, leave him alone. He doesn't want to talk to ESPN, Bleach Report, whatever. And then, like, an hour into it, the same people came up. They're like, actually, weirdly, Jay Cutler said the only people that he, like, will talk to is the Barstool guys. So that's when we met. We went in and hung out in your little cabana for a little bit. So I, re I redeemed myself. Well, no, that was the first time we met. Well, then the second time I wouldn't talk. I, would, I didn't do KFC. Do you have Do you have on? the clip, Eddie? No, we don't. I don't believe we have the clip. But that was always the uh, that was the they remote? said it on the show that that was a sticking point. Yeah, I don't. I honestly I don't remember this, but it, like I don't remember a lot of things at this point. So it could be true. It could not. Maybe it's not true. Um, maybe it, KFC it, was. No, what? it. I think it's true, but I don't. You didn't do it because you were. I don't know what what your rationale. It wasn't like, oh, I don't like Dave. It had nothing to do with that. I don't know why you did it. I don't either. I have no. I have no idea, and I don't. I don't remember that. I'd have to ask Big Cat. Maybe Big Cat has some insight. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? I'll text him. Well, I apologize if that happened. Well, it, kind of. It definitely happened. I did not take offense to it. Apology accepted. So, what's your Fair podcast enough. about? we're kind of all over the map. Um, you know, I did, uh, did Tom and out of Chicago first, and then I've done Josh McCown, Zach Miller. Um, I did Sage Steele yesterday from ESPN. I did, uh, um, Dan, uh, Carcillo Blackhawks who's doing medical mushrooms. I did him last week. Um, just kind of, I don't know. There's no theme really. I'm really just kind of feeling it out. Interesting like people. Like, do you like it? You know, I went, in, I went into it really um, not sure how I was going to feel. I, I don't know if I was anxious about it or just didn't want to do it. And I got through the first one. And I was like, all right, this isn't bad. And and now, like, I did Sage, who I didn't know at all. I kind of knew her background. And, you know, we talked for over an hour. And I was like, all right, like, this is this is kind of cool. But I haven't ran, in, I haven't ran into, a, like, a really bad one yet. And I feel like that's coming at some point. I feel like everyone probably has a really bad podcast where – it just kind of sucks for 30, 45 minutes. So I'm, all, I'm always like totally curious with guys like you. I don't have the stats, yeah. but you've made more money than most humans will need in their life, right? So <laughs> something like this, what, what's motivating you to do it? You just want to stay busy? Like what, why do you want to do it? Um, I mean, there's, there's a couple of things going on. Um, we're doing, uh, I could possibly be working with a company, uh, Outsider, um, dot com at some point in the future haven't figured that out or landed on that whatsoever um and then it's just something easy that i feel like i can pop in do a show a week get home you know because i've got three kids uh and they take up a lot of time and and doing something nine to five every single day i don't think it's feasible for me uh, and nor do i want to have a nine to five job i want my freedom i want to be able to do things and the world we're living in right now, I feel like, it, you, you know, you can do podcasts and you can talk to people. And it isn't something about being relevant because I've never really cared about that. It, it's just uh, something to do, I guess. Yeah, fair. D Dan answered. He said, I think he just liked KFC radio and said he was a fan of the show, so he didn't want to switch it up. It wasn't a slight at Dave. 
It was more so he just liked the dynamic of the show and didn't want to change it. I didn't take it as really a slight. I, I like I said, there wasn't something that happened. Well, yeah, I don't. I don't ever remember going. I don't ever remember you know having anything negative about you or, or no. really saying, you, "Hey, like I don't want to do this because of Dave." No, no, that's what I mean. We've never you, you you've never. We've never had like I don't want to say a falling out, but there's never been like uh, on off with us. No, so it wasn't. It, it just I remember hearing this. Oh, that that's interesting. No, if anything, like looking back and, and thinking about it, I mean, I think I think you did an unbelievable job of hiring ta- talent early on. I mean, it, it's it's unbelievably imp- impressive. Um, you know, your talent scout and being able to find guys that fit the mold early on in the company. Obviously, there's a few speed bumps, but. You know, you nailed it early on, and I think that's kind of set your trajectory. Yeah, you know, to be honest, I like when people ask me what I think I'm good at. That's almost the number one like For thing sure. they say. It's like we've been very good at figuring out who's like great talent, and, and the guys that we got early, like they weren't necessarily in the field. They weren't like Dan was doing real estate. Kevin's an accountant. We found great people that anybody else. Well, there was a couple of things. We'll hire anybody. It was an era where people look for that background. Like, you have to have done this, worked at this. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. If they're funny, they're funny, and we'll hire them. And we've been very good with that. We continue to be pretty good finding unknown talent that come from the clouds. No, absolutely. Same I mean, way. I think a lot of these guys, you found them early on, and they're, they were witty and funny as hell in writing and, and type and, and script. And then, you know, some of them have translated to being unbelievable on camera too, which is, I think is really, really difficult to do. You know, there's, there's funny people out there that can write and text and do all that stuff, but there's very few funny people that can do, can, can kind of do both and live in both worlds. Yeah. Do you, I, do you I remember like these answers? The, the, also true, Eddie, sorry to cut you off, but that yeah. isn't like, I always knew because early with Barstool, we, we made money by events and phys, like people meeting who we were. So yeah. if we were a bunch of Nate's, we would never get anywhere because they no. meet Nate and be like, look at this fucking ass. Like you can't build a company around Nate's. You can have a couple floating around, but sure. you got to be able to drink a beer with it. That was our brand. Yep. Yeah. And, and you found the guys that could do both. And, and that's unbelievably hard to do. No. Unbelievable. So, I mean, cheers to that. You did a hell of a job early. Thanks Jay. Do you remember the original Chicago guy? Sorry to kind of, you know, I mean, go to a not so great hire, but. I mean, do you feel like you're you you've wait. improved the Chicago brand? I wait. Are you asking? You're asking Jay, right? Yeah, I'm asking if he remembers the original guy before Big Cat. Uh, what was his name? Neil. Neil for Neil. Yeah, I do remember Neil. I do remember Neil, and he was he was like it was it was like off and on. Like some of the stuff was good, and some of the stuff was absolutely horrible, yeah. horrific. The the legacy of the Neil for Neil, and it, I, I've explained this. I tried to hire Dan. I, I tried to hire him and he didn't commit and I it's hard to find and we we're growing in these other cities I knew I want Chicago Chicago is always a core city because yeah. we knew that the athletes Jay Greg we knew we had them waiting and they're like come to Chicago I couldn't find the guy and Dan didn't commit so I was like fuck it we're just gonna try to try to make it work luckily okay. once we hired Neil Dan came was like, hey, can I contribute? And then he swamped Neil. And then Dan was ready to be like, all right, I'll come full time. So if I don't think if I hired Neil, I don't think Dan necessarily would have ever come. So it ended up working out. But yeah, it, I knew Neil wasn't the, the dream fit. It's just I couldn't find anybody else. So it worked. It definitely worked out. Definitely worked out. And, and Neil, I mean, he kind of bridged the gap for you. He was, yeah. you knew he wasn't going to be the guy, but he at least got the ball rolling and got, you know, I mean, it's fallen off since Big Cat, but what can we say about that? The Neil for Neil movement, unreal. What 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 do you mean by that, Jay? I'm just joking. With you. What are you, <laughs> are you like? Like, what's happening here? It's a, I just I just filled it up with water. That's what you, what's it's, happening? It's Where are you doing this podcast? Are you in a studio or your house? Uh, studio. I'm curious to see, Eddie, what else you have for Jay. Like, do you have notes or do you want me to well, run this thing? No, I want to know. Well, first off, what like what do you still follow, if anything? Like, how did it like obviously back in the day it's changed a lot. So what's your what do you still follow with Barstool? Um, I mean, everything on Twitter, um, Day, Big Cat, and then uh Instagram. Um, you know, the thing with Barstool is like you 
you guys are getting so big. There's so, so much shit out there. Um, like you guys are in Barcelona door. I mean, you're everywhere and you're selling everything in the, and the gambling, it's just like, I mean, it's an empire at this point. So like, I've just got to pick my, pick my battles of what I want to follow and what I, I mean, I don't have time for because I just don't have time to. Yeah. Read, and I think. Read it all. And like, who, like, so who's reading everything? Are you, are, are you still reading everything? No, no. I, we have editors just in the blog. I mean, when you were following it, that we've morphed so much and, and not only morphed, but like the world we live in with technology and video and how people consume. And I mean, when you really look at it, when I started, I remember being told what MySpace was. That's going to date us. But a girl's like, you get on MySpace. I'm like, what the fuck's MySpace? So, you know, we predated Facebook. We predated Instagram. We predated TikTok. So all these different mediums. But the early blog was me. Well, not even. It was a newspaper. And then when it with an original four, and then it moved to the blog, which was me, Kevin, Dan, um, you know, writing basically Feidelberg, K Marco all day, every day, and the way people consume. So it switches. I think a lot of the old people, the veterans, follow those original people. And those are the yeah. ones who will yes. complain. It's not the same. But new people consume us so many different ways. I'll meet somebody who says, I know it, I know Barcelona is an Instagram account. They don't even yep. know it's me. They know what we aggregate on that main account. Then maybe people know pizza reviews. People know PMT. They may know chiclets. The newer people pick their spots, really. And that's the impressive part that, you know, you and you and your team have been able to do is you guys have been able to keep up with, with the changing times and, and the, and the, and the younger people. Like, you know, I, we, I, me and Greg and the, and the, and the guys, we got into it when we we're, you know, 27, 28 years old. And now we're 38, 40 years old. And you guys have still, you guys still have that following, but then you also have the, you know, the 21 year old college kids and in between. So it's, it's, it's pretty amazing the different avenues and, and, and different media that you guys have that encapsulate the, you know, the 10, 20 year gap in age. Yeah. Yep. No, it is. And we've hired young. They keep us like, I mean, and, and every time I hear it, it's like, oh, I remember when I heard about TikTok and I'm like dreading it. It's like, oh, fuck, I got to go learn a new like social media vehicle and figure out. But we've been pretty good at that. What, what, Eddie, we keep you awake over here. What's going on? No, yeah, I got it. Sorry, I got a text from Gaz. I was seeing if it was in a, something I should have brought up, but it was for what? later in the show. Um, it was something about Biz being added to the uh, TNT broadcasting team. For- oh, that went public? Yeah, yeah I knew that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What Jay. do you think of the trajectory of Dave, Jay? What? What do you think about the trajectory of Dave? I mean, it's a lot different from when he started reading. Oh gosh, a lot different. I mean, but I don't think he's he's I mean, he's changed a little bit, but he hasn't changed that much. Um Thank which you. which is which is good to see. And and Dave the same too. Like, I mean, they they're obviously evolved and they've got a shit ton more money, but who they are as people and you know their humor and everything that they've done it, they, and they they've pretty much stayed grounded in that way. So Dave is literally still the guy that, you know, was in Chicago. He's just on a bigger platform. And I, I think the the thing that probably people gravitate most with Dave, um, both of you guys and Big Cat, I mean, is how authentic and how unchanging they are. So it doesn't matter, like, you know, how big the company's got. It doesn't matter how much pull you guys have and and, and reach. Like, you guys are still the same people. And, and and people appreciate that. Did you know where I don't want to ask a personal question, but this is personal. Yeah. You don't have to answer it, but I know this happened because it was in Eddie. We'll see how good you are at your notes. I don't know if you had this in. Were you hooking up with Tommy Laren? No, because I, I was I hung out with Tommy. Yeah, I was confused for that. Did you know that you're what I was in like the New York Post and some paparazzi thing saying I was hanging out with her in Nashville. And then oh. I, I was did like, you know what? Coming? no, you did. Oh, oh, you were confused. They confused you with me. Correct. I mean, I feel good about that. I felt pretty good about it, too. I mean, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it it was I like I got it. It's like, what the fuck are they talking about? And then it slowly unwind and people are like, no, Jay Cutler was with her when it happened. So, yeah, that was a little yeah, confusion. So, I mean, I've, I've been to bars with, with Tommy and hung out with groups and, and, you know, like kind of ran in the same circles. Um, cool girl. I think she has a boyfriend um, now. Yeah, uh, but, it was a little yeah. while ago. Did you have that in your notes, uh, Eddie? I, I know big. Okay. Eddie doesn't have notes. Like he's. I got notes here. I got. I don't notes. know you what wanna... he's doing. He's supposed you to want... be the host, and I'm. He... I'm running this thing. 
Yeah, he's just he's just in awe of what's happening. He's just I've just, asked like, three questions already. You've asked like four. We are like a question ahead of me. He's doing your pedia light. Like something happens. It's, with yeah. I don't I I don't like those fucking metal water bottles. So I just fill up a bottle we have. That's all it is. It's water. I mean, plastic bottles are awful for you. Well, I mean, nobody knows that. Well, that's if it's in the heat, right? I don't know. Can I ask I a question? So. You're a Bears fan, Eddie. He was yeah. the Bears quarterback. Where I, I always saw from outside the relationship with Cutler and, and the Bears fans. Where where is that relationship? I mean, like do like do Bears fans? Because you guys kind of ran them out of town, right? Absolutely. Yes. I wouldn't say that. Well, I wouldn't he just say did. That. He's the quarterback. I would say like the, a new regime took over. And then they ended the relationship. I think that's fair, right? Well, I mean, I think it started. Um, Wasn't you know, there it, that injury thing where you were hurt and they were like, he's not really hurt, he's not really playing? Like, that didn't, okay. am I making this up, Eddie? Or are you just like. Yeah, but second. that was in like year one or two. That was year two. Like, yeah. And we we never really patched our, 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 our relationships after that. I agree about that. I, I I would and I I said this when he was on the other show. Now it's become like a renaissance where like people love him and like it's cool to be a Cutler guy here. Is that true? That's what I'm asking. Do you feel that, Jay? Um, you know, I I feel like I'm more probably appreciated now than I was playing. Um, which is which is fine. I mean, it, it's a win loss game. It's a it's a results business, and we didn't get it done, and I didn't get it done sometimes, and. You know, but for me, looking back on it, a quarterback is one of those positions like you just need you need a support system. You need people around you and just is what it is. And for whatever reasons, there was just some years that we didn't have it. And so be it. Um, But I also but I'm also really cognizant about, um, you know, quarterback. You know, you 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 probably get paid the most and you're going to have the most blame. You're going to have the most uh, um, success and everything else that goes along with that. So I'm fine with the criticism I got then, and I'm perfectly fine with how things are. Hey, let's take a quick break here from talking to Jay Cutler to talk about Roback Active Wear. You all know Roback. It's the best fit. It's the best feel. And they got gear popping up all over the place. If you watch really any Barstool video, you'll see people wearing the quarter zips. They'll be wearing the polos. They'll be wearing all of it. Um, I love the hats, too, which is a nice, uh, it's a great golf hat. Very, very breathable, very smooth. So uh, it's hard to miss their subtle dog logo as well. So. Like I said, the first is the Robax Performance Polos. They're the only polos we wear here at the Dave Portnoy Show. You can't find a better-looking, better-fitting performance polo. They're simply the best. They're just quality, and that's that, that's a fact as well. Uh, second, Robax New Performance Hoodies. Hoodies, it's hoodie season. You're going to be around the bonfire. You're going to be mixing it up there. They're a total game changer. Maybe the softest, stretchiest hoodies of the game, and we wear them all the time. Sometimes even commando. You just go bare, bare chest on the hoodie. And then third, like I said, the quarter zips, they're bringing new meaning to the word soft perfect for a run around the block a day in the office or a night out with your girl that the definition of versatile in all honesty roback has been uh, gaining big time traction and uh, they just dropped the new gear you should go check it out so use code eddie e-d-d-i-e on roback.com for a generous 20 percent off your first order through the end of this week that's spelled r-h-o-b-a-c-k.com that's 20 percent off all polos quarter zips hoodies and tees with code eddie go check them out Roback.com, and uh, I'm very confident you'll be happy with whatever you purchase because Roback's great. All right, let's hop back into the interview with Jay. How about this? Do you sure. think Dave? How about do you think Dave should want the Patriots' offensive coordinator to take over for Belichick when he's done? Do I think he should want that? Yeah, I think it's going to happen. Why you're not a McDaniel's know. guy? Who me or him? Yeah, you. He asked the question of you. Is that what you're oh, asking, yeah. Eddie? I think I, I think that um, I well, think that's... he. I, I mean, obviously, I had a I had a run in with him in Denver that didn't turn out well, but I, I think that he is unbelievable coach. I think that the smartest move he's probably made is staying with Bill for all these years and not leaving and not taking a job. Um, I'm sure he's learned and matured like all of us, and I, I think he's going to kill it whenever whenever he gets his opportunity in New England. So, so that's a yes. Uh, one yeah, thing that 
I feel like is interesting with you, Jay, is, and this is, again, me, and I also want a, another stat, which you probably forget. I was the first guy that said to draft you out of Vanderbilt. When you did this at the Swamp, I was watching the game on my little computer. I'm like, <laughs> I like this kid. I was the first one. Credit to me. I've told you that before. But you, it, watching in Chicago, and your demeanor is miserable right like and I don't mean that as like when it's up or down but that's part of it you didn't seem to care about you know grab ass and with the media or putting on a show you're just yeah. kind of yourself being that but yeah. your personal life obviously with Kristen which you guys had TV show and doing this podcast you seem to be into the media side which is an interesting contradiction I guess there's been athletes in the past but you actually seem interested like did like the television show and all that shit, not the personal side, but you were, that would be something from what I saw on the football field. I'd be like, this guy will never agree to that. He does why he doesn't want that part of his life, but now even being doing shit like this, maybe I'm wrong about that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think with, with football, there's so much out of your control and there, there's so much that you can't control on the field and in the media and you're, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get it one way or the other. And with, with doing the TV show and doing the podcast, like with the TV show, like we basically controlled everything that was put out. Um, Kristen was one of the EPs. So like, if we didn't like something, like it was cut and all the storylines and everything, we came up with a lot of them ourselves. And so we were hundred percent in control and with the podcast is the same way. And if I don't like something, or if I don't want to do a certain guest, or if I don't, you know, not feeling it, then it's done. Um, I think with the and I think now with the NFL, you have so much more power as a player because of social media, and it's just a lot. It's a lot more acceptable for people to to speak out. Like you know, I grew up in like old school NFL right. kind of not old old school, but whenever I got in, it was like you know, it was you versus the media. And whenever I first got to Denver, the O line didn't speak to the media. I think it, maybe it was one year or the first, the, maybe the first year I get in was the first year that you had to speak to media. But the old line wouldn't speak to for countless years. So it was always one of those things like, all right, you know, don't talk to the media, give them as, as little as possible. And I think now it's kind of changed because if something isn't said that's favorable for you, you have the power and it's part and it's a hundred acceptable to to lash out and say something. And there's a lot of guys that, that kind of just take things over. So everyone's a little bit more accountable. And back in the day, you know, just wasn't one of those things. A, you didn't do it. And B, you really, you'd be looked down upon like you weren't a team player. And three, you didn't have access to all the accounts. And it just wasn't a thing. It's fair. Long way. When was the last time you saw McDaniels? Um, Josh, uh, gosh, I don't even know. It's been, it's been a long time. It could, it could have been, it could have been when I got traded. I have no idea. Really? So it's not like a, you don't really care anymore, though? You said there's no more bad blood? No, and, and I, I know I've had many coaches that are, are good friends with Josh. I mean, Dal Loggins, um, who was in Chicago with me, and, um, yeah. you know, he's good friends with him. His brother was actually in Chicago with us. So, like, I put that to bed a long time ago. Um, you know, I was young, probably made some mistakes, and, you know, he was first-time head coach at that point and just didn't work out for whatever reason. So, I mean, it worked out. You know, I went to Chicago and had – Eight years, so it, it was fun. Do you still watch a lot of football? You know, my my nine year old is obsessed, uh, and so you know, we were actually in Kentucky um, Saturday um, deer hunting, and you know, Sunday morning he's like, "Hey, we got to roll. We got to get home because we have the NFL Sunday ticket." And it's just like just boom, next game, next game, next game, and he's red zone and memorizes all the scores. So we're we're getting back into there. There was a point. Kind of when I first got out, I didn't watch much at all. And kind of gradually, I've watched more and more. And now, you know, I enjoy it now. Any regrets from the league or no? Um, I mean, it's always think, you can go back. But, like, things yeah. that honestly would, like, you wish you could change? You know, probably should have just went inside that that cha NFL cha NFC championship game, not set out the sidelines. Um, you know, and then there's probably a few press conferences out there that would have been more vocal about things. I probably would have done a few di things differently, but it's one of those things like once you start down that path, it's, yeah. you're literally, you're open up, you're going out a rabbit hole. Um, wait, so, so then you could have played then, or you're just like, you just would have just done it or what do you, what do you mean? 
No, I just would have went back inside because I, I, mean, I couldn't play. I couldn't. Yeah, I yeah, couldn't yeah. put it. I mean, I couldn't mm -hmm. throw. I, couldn't, I just would have went back inside and be like, gotcha. "All right, I'm, I'm out. I'm out." Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, but it's you. You do that. You're you're 50 things in. So no, I wouldn't. I mean, I could. I wouldn't change it. I can't change it anyway. Worked out. How it's gonna work out? I'm always curious because I'm obviously a huge Brady guy. You're a quarterback, and, and yeah. you know. What you said earlier, I agree with the quarterback position. You're so much, and a lot of positions, to be totally honest, in the NFL. You're, it's not a game like basketball where there's five guys, and if you're that good, you can control it. You are at the mercy of your line. Then Brady goes to Tampa and wins the Super Bowl. What are your thoughts? Like, where do you put him from seeing what he's done? Because there was always the system, the Belichick. You could put other quarterbacks in there, and then he goes, and I think now he's just – people view him on a different level. Like, do you think he's a guy, regardless of where he was, is was always destined for, like, greatness? Or how much was that right spot, right time? But I don't know. It's fascinating to me. It is fascinating. And it's it's one of those things, like, it was right spot, right time when he first got there. No doubt. There's no – I mean, the defense was great. You know, but the, there's also that other aspect of him being an exceptionally hard worker, exceptionally smart – dedicated to his craft, putting in all the time. So like, you know, you could put a lot of their quarterbacks in that, in that spot with that team and bill and the defense, and they're not going to win a Super Bowl. So he's able, the, the thing about him that's, that's so fan, fascinating is he's been able to evolve as a player and, and, and still grow and still get better at a young age, change his diet, change his workout regimen. And it's one of those things, like the longer you're in it, like there's things that I'm sure that you do, Dave, like it's just unconscious now. Like, you know, hey, that's not going to work. This is going to work. Boom, do that. And with with Tom now in the system and everything that he was with the Patriots for so long, like he could go up to the line and be like, all right, I know this isn't going to work. There's no chance. Let's get out of this. I know the system, like the back of my hand, it's like another language and he just switches it. And I, I think him leaving and going to Tampa, he was he was smart enough to know, all right, this is what I need around me. This is the type of coach I need. This is exactly the situation I need to go into. And he looked across the league, and I'm sure he had three or four teams, and he was like, hey, like, I can win here. I know I can win here. I can win here. Like, he wasn't just going to yeah. – he wasn't doing it for the money. He wasn't doing it for the fame. He wasn't doing it – he was doing it for one reason. That's get another ring. And he picked a team that would – give him one of the best chances to do it. Yeah. You know, some of these guys aren't in that position. They're, they're in the position that say, Hey, like I'm going to whoever pays me the most, or I'm going to go to, you know, I want to go to a good situation, but it has to be a, a certain number. That wasn't, that had nothing to do with his choice and not many people that go into free agency have that freedom. Yeah. No, do you fair. think you would have won with the bears? Um, I mean, probably. I mean, I don't know if they won a Super Bowl. I don't. I don't think anybody can guarantee a Super Bowl. Um, yeah. I think they would have been damn good. Yeah, but see, that's you said right situation. They've got some dudes. They've got yeah. some dudes, and their defense. I mean, whenever you're scoring points, your defense is always going to play better because you know you get one dimensional on the other side. And so I mean, it's just. I mean, but you, you just never know. You never know, really. But the rumor I mean, was it was on the table, but he wanted to go to warm weather. That's what I heard. Which is smart. I mean, yeah. getting older, go to warm weather. Um, I mean, Tom, whenever he comes into the building, everything changes. And that that is what a lot of people said, even the Patriots who lost, but the, the week one, they had a couple fumbles and stupid turnovers. And and I don't agree with it because it's Mac Jones week one who I love. But the, it, Brady just brings – with the way he practiced everything, like the accountability that that translates into practice. So all the stupid mistakes start. It's not just his athletic ability; it's what he's bringing to everybody else. And suddenly, you're playing like mistake-free football because of the way he practice and the way he sets the tone. And obviously, the more success you have, you can go. At, he now can go anywhere. It's like, oh, well, Brady says do this, you do it. So, yeah, I would say that he probably brings more to the table in the locker room and off yeah. the field. Then he probably brings physically. I mean, mentally, he's at a different level, and he puts them in position to win. But you know, I would say it has to be somewhat even of what the, he brings in the locker room and the accountability. And like, guys, like you're not going to let down Tom. Like, right. you're going to go out there and you're going to do everything possible. Or guess what? Tom's going to go in and you know go, hey, like this guy, we can't win with him. He's got to go. Right. And right. Management's go. All right, he's got to go. 
It makes sense. And you say we ran him out of town. I do think, Jay, would you agree? It took you this, this long to it took you this no, long no, 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 to, no, no. to to circle back to the we ran him out of town thing? Well, Were you just well, sitting there with like a mouse on a, a hamster on a wheel going for an answer, Eddie? No. Stop it. Stop it, Dave. Stop it. You it it because you talked about a right situation. Bears fans have definitely been on your side about that. You had a million coordinators. Yeah, like it was a very Eddie, defensive minded I watched, team. I watched the Bears play. He said hut, hut, and he had four guys in Correct. his fucking face. And you guys would be like, this guy sucks. It's like, are you watching oh, what's happening? No, <laughs> this, is, this is bullshit here. There, this is it, just... I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> no, we, I, it was not. We were. I mean, Barstool was always fair with you, I feel. Did you have a point to what you started or like what, what's happening here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that my point was, as you said at the, at the beginning, that we forced you out, that ever the Bears ran you out of town and you talked about Tom Brady, he needed a right situation. I said, I kind of met you halfway, that Bears fans have agreed that you didn't have a good situation. That was my point. Did good you point. watch the games, Eddie? Thank you. Did Thank you, you watch well, the I, game? I, Actually, I'll ask you that, Jay. Dan's not in the room. And this is from an outsider perspective, but you guys, and that's one of the things before you came in, it's always strange because you guys became pretty friendly and then you're the quarterback of the team. The team's not doing well. He's got to talk about the team. There was some tension there, right? Yeah. And like, you know, he started kind of putting it on me and then, you know, he was like Andy, the whole Andy Dalton thing. And I was like, yeah, tough. And, and I mean, to his credit, and I, I mean, I, I give him credit now, like he, he stuck to his guns. He was like, I, I meant it. And I was like, all right, like, I'm, we're not going to talk for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's tough. It is and, tough. And, it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. And it's tough to ride that line. And it's tough to, you know, be in the media and you have to give an opinion or, you know, or you're not getting the clicks or you're not getting people involved. Um, but at that point, like in my career, like I was like, Big guy, come on, bro. Like, give me a give me a little bit of credit. Give me a give me a break here. Yeah, and now maybe that's like God's way to to even this karma, some may call it, because yeah, now karma. now Back. he's got to do. Yeah, now he's got to deal with him. As does Eddie and these guys. <laughs> Eddie, you were probably like had like little lynch things walking around the streets of Chicago with Jay on it, being like, "Get this guy out of here!" And now you're being buddy buddy. Burning, burning, burning jerseys, the whole thing. Yeah, this is everything. bullshit. Jay, we got along great on our show. Now you come on here and you're just taking pot shots. It's fucked up, Jay. I'm not taking pot. You're not speaking. You're just sitting there just like, you're not bringing anything to the table. Uh, what do point. you mean? I asked you about McDaniels. You're like, oh, well, like, it's okay now. But like, you fucking. I never you're... said, oh, well, like, it's okay now. I had, a, I had a long-winded explanation. I explained myself very thoroughly. Just repeated it like me and. Me and this. Yeah, and, and to be honest, Eddie, you tried to deny that you guys ran. I'm like, you got run out of town. You're like, well, I don't, maybe we didn't. It's like you did. Like, I there mean, wasn't there. There was a. Not everyone did. That's what I'm saying. I didn't did you? do it. So that's. I did not run Jay out of town. Oh shit! I, I didn't. Would love, I would love to go back to. I love it. 17, 16, and see exactly what you were doing. Let's go back. You, you, was sitting in a bar, crushing me. A hundred. Let's go back. I and mean, I, yeah, and I, I was thought, probably the out of town guy being like, look, he has no time. Like, what do you want him to do? No, no, no. The second year Tressman, the offense fucking fell off a cliff. Like, I mean, it did. That's just a fact, right? I was there, bro. <laughs> I know it did. It, it went from being the number two offense behind the Broncos and Peyton Manning's first year. And then we fell off a cliff the second year. And like, I, I know, gonna- I don't know the timing. I know I've talked to Greg when they didn't resign him and that probably if it's like, he was like, why didn't it's like, that was the prime of his career. He didn't come back. You guys took the weapons away. You had no line. It was like, and then you got Eddie sitting the, the, the ah, bears like you. with the sausages doing the skip. We can't get a quarterback. It's like, wait, well, I mean, what do you want? Ah, whatever, whatever. Jay, thanks for coming on. Great to see you. <laughs> it was a good interview. Oh, that was a joy. All right. Am I going on? Did I get invited on your podcast? Do you know? Um. Yeah. Whenever you want. We thought. We'd I don't. Do I don't want to force myself on. I thought I got invited. Uh, we did invite you. Yeah. Yeah. Super, I said yes. We're just, super, we're just super busy, and I thought that I would do yours first. Since- yeah. No. I'm down. I'm down. Whenever you guys. Whenever you want me. I. I. I have ultimate loyalty to our early guys who like stick with us through. So I'll, whenever you need me, I'm happy to go on. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll not soon then. All right, cool. Talk to you later. Thank you. All right, nice guys. Thanks. See ya. See ya. All right.
That was Jay Cutler. Um, what did you think, Dave? How'd it go? First time I ever talked to him. He, he gets better when he gets almost like confrontational. He's like, and I don't mean that negative way. He likes mixing it up. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. Uh, trifecta nutrition, Dave. Yeah, so trifecta nutrition, the way to eat healthy. Uh, and my frozen pizza is going to be flying off the shelves because it's obviously the best you'll find. But if you want fresh, never frozen trifecta, can't have frozen pizza all the time. Oh, my God. Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> what, what is this? An ambush? What do you think this is? Oh, jazz? This is a cry jazz. for help from your friends and from one of your longest friends in this content game myself, Ryan like Whitney. Are you still doing an ad read? Who, who, what an ambush. <laughs> what an ambush is right, what, but what holy fuck. Per, All the you, guys around you know it's time for an ambush. What and are you going to say, gonna Purple say, Air? What are you going to say, at Purple Air? Hey, let me tell you something. I wasn't even going to say anything about anything. I was going to let it all slide. And by the way, I wrote, is this real? I didn't necessarily think it was real, but the crazy thing is, no, is no, that no, it no. could have been real. No, 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 no. no yes, no, yes, no, yes, Steve. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 Ryan, that's the Ryan, problem. Ryan, it could no, have been no, real. No, 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 it could not have been real. I don't have purple Dave, hair, never. Dave, Ryan. nothing's off limits now. Yeah, oh, purple hair is off limits. What? Name one thing. Actually, you know what? I actually think you did have purple hair and then saw the backlash and fucking yeah, re-dyed it back out to your normal hair Let me tell you, what is one thing that you can notice on me that's different? Appearance. Uh, Zero. Okay, what's the necklace? What I always wear a necklace, though. Dave, what's the necklace you wear? It's a Describe chicken. Describe it for me. What's it's, on it? It's gold chicken. Okay, so it's a chicken. So why yeah, but I all I had a pirate dog beforehand. That's not like oh my god, someone just randomly walking down thinking I'm Megan Rapoli or whatever her name is, Rapone. Whoa. Whoa, it's a chicken. Dave, it's a necklace. I wore to the chicken. Back yeah, to the chicken, chicken, Dave. Yeah, it's a chicken. You Ryan. guys caught. So it's a chicken, and, and 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 as far as I know. Your girlfriend, who seems wonderful, I'm, I don't, I don't know her, but she, she's, she has one as well. Correct, matching chickens. So you guys wear matching chicken. That's all different too. than purple hair. But it's like not like that's nobody the way everything's yeah, everything's yeah, going. Yeah, no, it that's isn't wrong. because if you don't know what it is, you'd never look twice. If you look at me, purple but hair. Everyone like, that knows what it is. That's the point. But it's a, it, it's, it's like under my shirt. You don't even notice. It's a stylish it's piece. Your shirt. The last uh, it show is. I watched, no, it's, you had because it's a, pop just it, to see it. It's a stylish piece. Okay, Dave, you're wearing matching fucking necklaces, dude. I don't They're, care it's how a stylish cool it is. piece. And, and, and it's a, it is it's, cool. Is that an emoji? Like, yeah, it's this an emoji. is not the Dave Portnoy that was. What is fucking... wrong with an emoji? An emoji that's like a matching emoji calling each other a nickname uh, yeah, chicken and yeah, wearing no, the same necklace? Yeah, what is fine. wrong with that? I, I, have I don't no know, problem man. That. Like, I have no problem with that. It's called romance. Oh, no, ro romance is. What's wrong with things... it? You don't even know. It's like, on, look, you don't even see it. Dave, every other thing I see purple doing, hair, uh, no, content, no. And you, you could, you're popping. Big it. difference. It's, popping. Bi it's stylish. It's okay, a big Dave. difference between a chicken and purple hair. You, you don't have, grant that that's a, a big difference. You have a tattoo of her on your fucking body now. The uh, again, it it it's in a you're discreet place. No kidding, it's a discreet place. Where is it? In her, like you can barely see it. Discreet place is covered by clothing in my book. No, nobody would. Uh, there's okay. nothing physical. Any Nobody, unless I said it, would ever know anything is different about me, on me, anything. Nobody. A, a fit, purple hair is okay, crazy. Okay, okay, you physical. won't acknowledge purple hair is a different level. P purple hair, I think, is a different level. That's but all. the whole point is I don't think anyone was that surprised. Like, no, it's a big shocked, leap. But they're like, holy it's a big shit, leap. Man, that guy's he's going in deep now. Oh, purple hair would have been would have been intervention. And, and and I think Eddie was right. Like, if she's like, hey, Machine Gun no. Kelly me no. in October, no, you're no, going to no, do no. it. No, MGK wrong. by October. No, wrong. Well, well, okay, Dave. Wrong. You're the biggest face of a monster media gambling empire and opening night of the fucking NFL. You're at a fashion show, dude. All right. What is going on, man? No, no, time out. Uh, the, the, the fashion show is over as the game began, and she's moved to spend more time here. It's her first week in New York. New York. She got invited to this thing before, so I'm like, yeah, I can do both. And I like the fashion show. I stand by it, hand up. It wasn't the Pats. It, it was the first game of the year. Where you I have, like, saw the game. I watched the game. All guys doing a live stream. I watched the game, and you know what? I texted Dan, if you want to see it, before. I go, Should I, do you need me there? Do you want? He's like, we have too many people, so I didn't come. Speaking of Dan, 
I think he thought the purple hair was real. No. For him to think, I. That purple that, hair, I would like, never go purple hair. It's a huge to compare what what this necklace and and that little tat to a purple hair is crazy. Do you remember in uh? Did you watch Entourage? Do you remember when I thought it was overrated, but I did watch the show. Do you remember yes. when Johnny Drama had the girl and they'd say tweet 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 like no, they're good night like. It was so bad, and now it's like you're wearing the necklaces like chicken, chicken. Like I wear a you're necessary. necklace. You're such a I've powerful sw- man. Like, I've fuck. switched the necklace. I've switched from a pirate dog to the chicken is so much better. No, it's not because no, the pirate is. dog stood for the old Dave, the fucking savage Dave, the animal. And the chicken is little chicken Dave. And, like, I watched the fucking fashion show. Like, it wasn't even the I Met like- one. It wasn't even the big oh, dog Oh, yeah, fashion like show, I'm getting invited it? to the Met. I enjoyed, fa- I enjoyed it. I don't know, man. Like all I, I I'm see, saying is for I, you to you I see know. you do the Addison Ray um, pizza view, and you're doing like the hover hand because I think you're like afraid if you touched her, she'd kill you. <laughs> it's called respect. R e s p e c t. I I just I don't know, man. I don't know. I got kids walking up to me and, and like Dave Portnoy's these kids gods with dog, with dog. What's going on with them? It's not happening. Help them out. It's not happening. It is, not though. Happening. It is happening, Dave. If you can't see it, and by the way, like, she may be awesome. I'm sure she is, but it's you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. It's too lo- powerful to give in to things you don't want to do. I don't. And I think there's some things you don't want to do. Like what? Name it. Go to a fashion show. No, I like NFL. fashion shows. I like fashion shows. It was a 7 o'clock fashion show. I was happy to do it. It's a cool thing to do. It's a New Yorky thing to do. I enjoyed it. I was out before kickoff. I don't see what the big deal is. Listen, you time out, time out, time out. You've known me forever, and you know that I've always gotten Dave's watching the hills, Dave's doing this, not watching for. I like shit like that. I always have. I dress as Justin Bobby for fucking Halloween when people are fucking throwing eggs at me outside fucking Hurricane O'Reilly's. I like shit like that. Yeah, I don't think there's a problem with liking shit like that. I just so then what's the your problem? Going- I'm saying I would never get purple hair. If I get purple hair, I want an intervention tomorrow. All right. There's a big I difference. I mean, I, I don't know. Eddie, like, do you, do you think that? He would say no. I just don't see you saying no to one thing to she's going to say. I, I right. don't. I, I guarantee she asked me to do a TikTok dance last night. I said no. Fact. Fact. It happened. And and and, and, and are you in a fight now? No. Okay, that's good. Because I remember the picture. Last time I was on, it was the sweatshirt and the tongues and the and the TikTok with the, what? the tongues like that. And it's just stuff you didn't do. It's just what are you talking? I didn't. Have, I haven't had a girlfriend for fucking ever. Dave can't have a girlfriend. No, is that, Dave is that can't the have game a we're that's playing? Exact, that's what I don't want to make this into. That I'm I happy think it Dave is. Has a girlfriend. I'm happy for Dave. Dude, it, no, Dave, I don't Dave's know that you are. But I think like Dave doesn't know what Dave wants a little bit. What are you talking about? I don't know. This necklace is fire. I have people they don't even know what it is. They go, well, that thing's awesome. Yeah. Do you then tell him my girlfriend is the same exact one? If we're next to each other. And then other. they'd be like, oh, man, not that cool. You're matching mm, fucking no, necklaces. No, they're like, that's pretty cool. You did good. You're like playing on like three grades above your pay grade. Good job, Dave. I don't think you really are. I mean, you're fucking loaded, dude. You're a funny bastard. You can get whoever you want. You can't get bullied. Who is getting bullied? Nobody's getting you. bullied. By who? You know the movie Saving Silverman? It's like Saving Silvana Man now. You remember Saving Silverman, Eddie? Yeah, good movie. Great I've never movie. seen it. These guys have to save their buddy named Silverman, and, and he's so whipped, and they have to go save him, and then it's like it's, it's reversing. It's like turning into this. It's Saving Silvana Man. I, I, I literally, no, I disagree. I'm not doing I, I, everything I'm happy and want to do. I, I would never get purple hair. I, right, you're, you, what's the Eddie, most outrageous thing? I went to a fashion show before the NFL game. Come on. You were giving her, you were, I mean, what is it? You're walking her over Cheez Its like one by one all day. Cheez Its. Buddy, it was fucking cheese and crackers. She's on Buddy. the couch. I have it. I'm like, hey, want a fucking like cheese and cracker? It's called being like nice to your girlfriend. 
That no, gets no, blown I, out. I think being nice is important. But if you guys were on you the don't. couch and yeah. she said, will you go get me some crackers? Would you get up and yes. get them? Or would you say, you go get your own crackers? No, no. I, I would get up and get them. But well, I would, gonna, she would, too. a long life together. She would, too. Like, hey, can you go grab me crackers? She would, too. Like, what are we talking about? I'm talking about a lot of your loyal fans, millions of them out there, grabbing me on the street and saying, shake some sense into your boy. Well, what what is him. so crazy? I just think there's a couple things I just mentioned. Getting cheese and crackers. You honestly think that cheese and crackers is crazy? I think it's like a First trend. All, I think I bought the cheese and crackers. The tattoo is probably the craziest thing. The tattoo is probably. Tattoo's craziest. Tattoo's craziest. Tattoo's nuts. It's not that nuts. Where's her D? Same place. All right. Well, I'm happy for you. No, you're not. I, I, you're mad. No, I'm not. I, no, you're, you're mad. I don't know why. It's sad. I'm not mad. I'm not you're mad. Upset. You I think I've changed. I just care so much about you that I'm, and, and I'm what do you like I'm think looking is out for going, you. And uh, nobody besides Eddie has the balls to say one thing to you. Everyone's so scared of you, which I understand, scared. but fuck. People, people are cracking jokes all the time. Who? Everybody. Who? Who I mean, says fucking Rico, Rico's talking about dog collars and shit. Well, Rico couldn't even get a timeout from you, so, I mean, he's a little afraid. Yeah, well, I, I granted it. I granted it. Two seconds. I granted it. <laughs> Listen, it's a two-way street. I'm not the easiest guy in the world to date. You know that, right? Um, I don't know. I feel like you kind of yeah, are. You I, do I don't whatever know. she says. I, yeah, no, I mean, I don't okay, know. in terms of, in terms like, of not being around like I, a lot. I have yeah. my own, like, catalog at, or, or, at, like, you know, adult stores. Well, that was all before you knew her. Yeah, so, but that I mean, you don't think. End, all right, you don't think. Yeah, no, no, no girl would care about that. No girl would. No, be girls like, would no doubt care. All right, girls would yeah. no doubt care. But so in the it, end, you know, a real one wouldn't care if she's like, "Hey, I didn't know you then." Not gonna worry about what you did correct. before me. And we're dating. But I'm not saying it's the easiest fucking thing of all time either. All right. All right. Well, I hope it goes well. I hope it continues to go well. And thanks for having me on, Eddie. Hopefully, this guy. I think things are gonna change a little bit. I don't. I think there might be a video of her maybe getting you some crackers coming out soon. It works both ways. You said that. But, but she puts me on her stuff more than mine. Like, she's a, girl, she's a normal girlfriend. Like, girlfriends do that. They post their boyfriend. Just so happens I'm a fucking media conglomerate by myself so people take notice. But, like, girls can post their boyfriends. Not all their boyfriends are the face of generations and generations. So what are you going to do? All right, generations that care about you, so remember that. If I, again, if I show up with purple hair, I'll, I'll take an intervention, gladly. Is there anything else that would, Eddie, you think would maybe cause an intervention that, he, that you could possibly see coming in the future? I mean, purple hair. I, I think that the point that I didn't enunciate was that a lot of people believed it. That was the, that that's was... because they're stupid. I'm not that stupid, dude. You apparently, I was stunned. That's why I was like looking out for you. It's like you know, you're cleaning up poop, and you got kids going to nursery school, and you're crying. And he's growing up too fast, and big cats. Everyone's growing up. I'm still out here slinging out here in the streets. So maybe you guys are losing your sensibilities a little bit. And by the way, I'm still people who know Barstool. Like people will compare this to the Hammy age. The Hammy age, I was wildly disengaged. Like I'm everywhere right now. I'm working, doing more content. Like. The same as always. So you see, but me like everywhere. you've said before, like you don't, you know, your your girl loves going out till eight in the morning. You don't really love it yet. You do it every weekend. It's like, does that not get exhausting? Yeah, no, that does. Yeah, so just like be like, hey, babe, we're, we're not going home out tonight. Out. Like, what, we, what's we, she gonna we, do? Like, we we do far less when we're in Miami. We do a lot more. But no, I agree. All right. Well, um, I wasn't comparing it to Hammy Gate. I wasn't comparing it to that. You never did any of that shit then. But all right. Nice catching up with you guys. Yeah, always a pleasure. See you, boys. Bye. Good to see you, Ryan. <laughs> Tried to ambush How, me. How'd you think that went? Listen, if I had purple hair, I need an intervention. If I had a tattoo of Mike Tyson style on my face, I need an intervention. <laughs> Like this necklace, you have to know what it is to be like, and I've said what it is. I have no problem. I love the necklace. It's awesome.
So no no problems with what he said there or just kind of? I just think he's wrong. There's nothing I'm doing that I don't, with the exception of I like going out. Like Gaz and I go out. I'm a go-home earlier than later guy. That's the only thing. She likes to never go home. I like to go home. But I like to go out. Like, I, if I wasn't with her, I'd be going out. I'd be single. You think that was an ambush? Well, you tried to ambush me. My, no. My, well, you didn't tell me it was coming on. Yeah, it was late ad. It was a late ad to the outline. And yeah. If an employee wants to bring something up on air, I feel like they should be allowed to talk, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, who? No, I just doodling. Tri- trifecta nutrition. Yeah, back to trifecta. Uh, I'm gonna be eating a ton of frozen pizza because it's available September 28th, I believe, at all WalMarts or 90 percent of them. But you can't just eat frozen pizza. Gotta balance that with some fresh, healthy food. Trifecta. Don't have to suffer to eat healthy. Save time rather than having to spend hours meal prepping. Science back nutrition. All Trifecta's meals. Follow scientific nutritional principles. Food quality is their priority. Fresher food, farm to fork supply chain, never frozen organic produce. Fully cooked food, no wasting time cooking or cleaning. Just heat and get healthy. That also is, that's why I don't cook. I hate cleaning. I don't mind cooking. I hate the cleaning. Not with uh, Trifecta. Don't have to worry about it. Shop meal plans. Get 40% off with code Dave at trifectanutrition.com. Dot com. Chop meal plans to get 40% off with code Dave at trifectanutrition.com. I got the shredded uh, chicken on the counter, so we're excited for that. Um, what about, so, I mean, I'm assuming a lot of people were giving you shit about the fashion show opening. Yeah, night. but that's like, yeah, that is the same if I'm not like I watched the v, the VMAs. Um, and yeah, like I while thought, the Bears, yeah, the- like I've always done that. I always like watching that shit. I watch football from all weekend, then 1 o'clock to like 8 o'clock. My eyes are falling out. I like watching other stuff. I think it's funny. So people have always gotten on me for that. No, I think I that's like fair. fashion shows. I think the Monday night or the Sunday night game was fair. Like if you didn't, if you didn't bet. The Rams with the Bears. And I did. Like- I was paying attention. I had the Rams. I bet it. I'm watching. I'm paying attention, but I'm also watching the VMAs. In the fashion show thing, people got to understand, Silvana can work remote. She moved from Miami to here because we were going back and forth. It was impossible. She doesn't really know anybody. It's like we haven't done anything. She got invited to this thing. It's like, yeah, I, I've been working. I haven't been home much all week because of work. It's like, yeah, I'm going to go to this, and then you see the game. The times are off. It. That's what a guy, a guy should do. A boyfriend should go to that. And I like going to it. I had fun. You seem like not flustered, but maybe there is like a little. Did you have like some guilt Thursday night or no? No. No? No. Okay. I don't know. There was There's a little no. bit of uh, a different well, people energy. People are acting like I'm losing my marbles. It's just not true. Uh, so you enjoyed the fashion show. I, I don't think you've done one of those. You, you've been to. No, well, I, you like the Victoria's I, I, Secret. I, I, I went I went with Paul to um, the swimsuit one. I went to one in New York last fashion week, last fashion year. Um, and then I went to this one. I think a big difference with a lot of it, it's like if I've hung out with girls before in the past, Silvana posts a lot more. She's like active on Instagram. So you're seeing what I'm doing. Yeah, and I guess it's a... Um a different kind of angle of you too, like people like it, not a, like a hidden camera, but it is almost like a, it's like a reality Dave kind of thing, right? Yeah, sorta. I mean, I I dated really in like the last five years one girl before Silvana for a little bit, and she was very private, so nobody knew what was going on. Yeah. How was the um? How was the college football show? Great, great crowd. Obviously, Ohio losing made it great. Um, but yeah. Big crowd there early, stayed late. I don't want to, like, I it felt like the Beatles. It's like people fucking ripping at us, huge crowds. It was great. I got The turnout looked awesome. It was. It was great. So what should yeah. we do here? I got a call in seven minutes. What? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. Okay. Um, 
Wait, so like even outside of that tailgate, like when you were just walking around the town outside of like yeah, your people area, know us, was... but I mean even the t- like they didn't leave after the show was done and getting in the cars, people running like taking it's just nuts. Like there's some videos out there, they're crazy. It's like it literally looks like a rock bands there. So a big change of pace from when you went to college there. I would say so. <laughs> Did you go back to like? Do you do that when you go back there? So you're like your old. I saw you went to the education building. Yeah, that was. Uh, so I, Silvana was with me. She came and I did want to, she like wanted to see the campus. So we did a quick tour and like, uh, it's not, you know, we walked around, I saw that sign, took it, but no, I just showed her the major spots. Yeah. No, it looks sick, dude. And then the big Ev, I mean, you're right. The Ohio state thing was going to plan it more perfectly. Hilarious video of me. Just <laughs> look like a big old pillow. <laughs> you're just fucking, yeah. I don't know what you're doing to him. Were you, um, are you like so are you in? Are you fully in here? Like on Michigan? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm obviously going to pay attention to 2 and 0. They can they're in control. They've had a good start. I they haven't beaten Dick. I mean, I'm not that big of an idiot to be like, "Oh, they're suddenly going to go undefeated." But I'm going to ride it while we have it because we haven't had it much. Did you see the Portnoy for Press sign at the uh, I did. Arkansas? Yep. yep. That was pretty cool. And then uh opening weekend, you 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 seem like you're in on Mac Jones. I thought he looked great. I mean, I, he reminded me so much of Brady. So I, they should have won that game. You put the ball on the ground going in, not his fault. He drives him down there, two huge fumbles. But the way he moved in the pocket, the way he threw under pressure, third down throw, I, I couldn't have been happier with the way he looked. And I saw Brady t- tweeted at you about the. Was that like a sponsor thing? Did you yeah, know it was coming? Yeah, he supposed. Uh, do are they FTX? I don't know if they do this show. They do a lot of advertising with us. They sponsor um, the DDTG. They sponsor a lot, and he's one of their spokesmen. So I think that was probably tied in. Gotcha. So it wasn't just like an out of the blue thing. No, you weren't like. I mean, okay. I didn't know it was coming, but yeah, it's definitely ad related. Gotcha. And then I uh, I saw you. We're going at AOC a little bit yesterday. I, yeah, I don't like being political. Blah blah blah. Yeah, you do, Dave. But it's just ridiculous. <laughs> she was at the Met. I saw it with um, with tax the rich, and, and so I I tweeted like kind of, I forget exactly what I said. Do you have it in front of you? Tax the rich, but first I'm going to have the time of my life partying with them at the most extravagant, over the top part of the year that is a ce- essentially a celebration of richness. Which is true. I, um, and, and it wasn't like a stance. On, I have no problem paying taxes. I pay a shit ton of taxes. And uh, the wealthy and extremely wealthy should pay more taxes. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but to wear that dress at that event, when you, I feel like AOC loves rubbing shoulders with famous people. And like her date was a super rich person. And she'll never turn down a fancy invite and then be like, tax the rich. It's just so hypocritical and disingenuous. Like, don't go. You know what? Wear, like, newspapers and stand on the side and be like, tax the rich. But don't go in and enjoy all the fruits and benefits of the rich. It's just so disingenuous. And what were a lot of people's point was that, well, those people are, like, the ones that pay their taxes. And then I don't even know what that means. Well, I don't know. Like, so they're the celebrities that are outspoken about things. So <laughs> it was more of a message to the people at home. <laughs> <laughs> we know what the what, what they what do you mean? They pay their. What does that mean? Well, they pay their by choice. Yeah. They, they the rich pay their taxes by choice. Like they have no problem doing it. I should say. Who says that? I Listen, that's I pay my taxes. I have to. If you told me I didn't have to pay in taxes, I wouldn't. And I guarantee you every one of those motherfuckers in there would do the same. Do you have question? I fumbled that big time like a year ago when you said that. Can I can you can you tell what you paid in taxes last year? Did I, I say it last year? No, I guess. And I guess like an egregious amount. And you're like What did you, you guess? Get, I guess like in the millions, which was stupid. Oh, I paid no, that's not. You must have guessed a lot. I've paid millions in taxes. Yeah, but I don't. I thought was that for like a lump sum? I thought you you're not like unless if you are. No, I paid millions, millions in taxes. Are you saying because he's not all liquid? Yes, that's what I mean. 
I'm not all liquid, but I still pay millions in taxes. I mean, obviously, equity, but yeah, I pay a shit ton of taxes. The pen deal was done. I pay a million. I pay tons. I don't know what you guessed, but I do remember it was way too much. You may have been like 100 million or something. Yeah, it was crazy. I, I said a crazy amount. But yeah, no, I pay a shit ton of tax. Basically, I'm in the tax bracket. For every $2 I make, I pay one in taxes. I'm in the highest of the high tax. And, the, and people always say, oh, you don't know what you're doing. Sp I'm not in that, like, fancy where they figure it out and don't like you hear, like, a Jeff Bezos. So I'm not that. I'm pretty straightforward. For every two I get, I pay one in taxes. Period. Because that's my next question. Like, if you get rich, aren't there people that just come running to your door and they're like, here, here's how you, here's how you beat it? <laughs> I don't know if that's such a different level that I don't know about, but no. And I've talked to other people, and they're like, no, there's no way to beat it. There's no nothing to beat it. I don't know if they're – you hear these stories. I don't know where they exist. If they do, I have no idea. I'm very honest. I – I would pay the least amount of taxes I can possibly pay in a legal manner. If somebody shows me a loophole, I'd dive headfirst through it and do it. I would. Anybody would. That's what we're talking about, these celebrities. And then if you want to donate to charity or do this or that, fine with the money. I don't – like – and this is probably boring. I don't trust the government for shit. It's why when we run charities, too, a lot of times, we try to control the money because we can get it, make sure it gets out. So giving money to the government, which I think is one of the most wasteful spending organizations in the history of mankind, not Democrat, not Republican, doesn't matter who, wasteful, wasteful, wasteful. I would not get, if it was my choice, I would not give my money to them to spend. I'd rather, I'd rather you say, hey, Dave, we're going to, tax you five million or whatever the number is but or dave you can take the five million donate to charity as your choice i'd be like let me spend it how i'd like i also fundamentally well, this is too deep i believe trickle down not up that's just how i believe um as a business owner the more you tax me the stingier i'm gonna get with my employees that's how i've always felt and i believe that is how i look at the economy in general not everyone may believe that but that's how i look at the world I think this is interesting. So you don't think so? I think this is interesting from you. Yeah, that's an honest like thing. Like I, as a small business guy, when I'm in Milton with like growing or even here, the more money the government takes from me, the less I have personally to live my life. The more stingy I will get with my employees. Because it's like I don't have as much money. If I give me more, I'll spread it out more. I'm happy to do that. Give me better tax breaks for the business. I'll give it back. That's how I've always done. I'm not saying every business owner is like that. You can go check my track record. And for 10 years, I put every penny I had back into the company. That's how I built it. Not everyone may do it. But that, I do believe that. I do believe the, the you can certainly, it's an age-old argument. Trickle down, trickle up. I so believe you trickle felt down. That if you felt the government was competent, would you be okay paying taxes then? I mean, I'm okay. I, listen, I shouldn't say I'm not okay because it's not even an option. You just pay what you pay. So it is what it is. I've never been like, oh, I don't want to pay taxes. But the amount of waste that goes into it when you have a lot of politicians who have probably never had like a real job or run a real business or done things, it's just fucking wildly wasteful. 1.2. What? Taxes? My guess, yeah. I, I guess it really depends what year you're looking at. I, I, I'm going to be paying far, 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 far more taxes than right now and moving forward. I, I pay taxes on money on the stock I get. I pay taxes on the stock gains I get. I pay taxes on my salary. I pay taxes out the ass. And I have no problem. I'm not like don't tax the rich. I'm not. I, I, you. We should tax the rich, but I do think it's trickled down. I think there's a lot of waste. I think the government fucking disincent some people from working. So I, there's a lot of things that go into it. I don't think it's a simple thing. My point is you can't schmooze with the rich and go to the most exclusive, look at me, celebration of richness and high society with a tax the rich dress with a straight face. And people are like, oh, that's a chair. How stupid it is. Some people in the comments who are defending her, and this is politics, by the way. 
if you if you're on her side, you defend her, even if she killed somebody. And if you hate her, you fucking criticize her, even if she cured cancer. So that's how it is. But people being like the Met Gala's, don't you know it's a charity event? It's a charity event for an art museum. It's Anna Wintour's "Look at Me" from Vogue event. Shut up! It's a charity. It's not curing cancer for kids in a hospital. It's an art museum that has entirely way too much money because of this event. I, I read somewhere they have a Persian rug specialist that makes 300 grand a year, has never seen the Persian rug because it's in storage. This is a museum. Uh, it's an art museum. It has nothing to do with the charity event. This is, you think people are there to raise money for charity? They're there to say, look at me. I'm rich. I'm famous. And she, without knowing her, likes that a lot. She makes decent money. She spends a ton on haircuts. She's more about the storytelling and playing the game and doing all this shit than actually helping people. That's my vibe. Well, her aside, art is the biggest scam in the world. One of them. Is it? Yeah, it's all a fucking ploy. It's all it's all charity, and then it's all write offs. Oh, and they oh, all just, oh, that that aspect of it. Yeah, they just juice it I up. I thought you like, meant like art in general. It's like, well, it's oh. worth whatever somebody pays for. No, no, no. I'm saying like all these people are into it because they pay it and then they write it off. And then like there's like there's like stories of like new artists that are like have like three pictures and they're just bidding against each other to juice it up. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't even know write offs and shit like that. I, I, I don't even know how that like I'm so bad at all that shit. But yeah, it's like 30 grand for a table. I mean, it's I guess people are talking about her. That's what she wants. I mean, that's like when she created that whole controversy out of nothing with us, right? With the unions and a clear joke that anybody with a fucking brain... Like, there's a lot of things we've done at Barstool that maybe some people can be like, was he joking? Was That union thing was the most obvious, like, storyline joke thing of all time that she just fucking stuck her face in just so people would be talking about her. Like, honestly, it's disgusting. And sure, that's colored my opinion. How can you take someone like her serious when she sticks her face in something that mundane just for clicks? Like, that is who people think is an honest person? No chance. No, you're not kidding. The fucking union thing was crazy. 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 Like, if you t took 20 seconds to look into that, you'd know it was a joke. And not a joke that was at the expense of unions was nothing. So it... it but she doesn't care. Like that's and that's the problem with politics. That's why people want me to run for president. Honestly, because at least for better or for worse, you may not like everything said. I'm honest. I may not always be right, but I'm always honest. Yeah, like I get She's saying dishonest. what she said. AOC is dishonest. I have no problem saying that. I get saying what she said if that was like a real take you had. But like you said, if she were, if there was a little more research done, you could clearly tell. Like it's it irresponsible. It's, it's so irresponsible. But both sides fucking do it. It's not just her. There's very few. It's hard to find a politician that you truly think has the best interest of other people ahead of their own. Honestly, few and far between. And yeah, honestly, disagree. somebody who, who does is probably not cutthroat enough. To, to get where they need to be. Our politics is fucked. You have to be a scumbag, egotistical, cutthroat maniac to rise in politics. I mean, that's the same media thing now, too. It's the same way. Um, but, I mean, speaking of that, did you see Trump said he, want, he would be okay with you hosting a debate? I did see that. But even that, I got put next to Clay Travis. It's like I'm not – Clay Travis is openly political and – kind of baits people with, i i don't mean to like i want to be i'm surprised i haven't been asked on tucker tonight for that aoc thing which would paint it even more but yeah i did see that i would i would not i would do it without clay i would not do it with clay it was also a leading question like he asked your name so who did clay Whoever was doing the interview, oh, 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 oh. like yeah. it was like, what would you think about Portnoy or, or Clay? And he was like, yeah, they'd be great. He'd be better than Chris Wallace or whoever the Wallace guy. I is. mean, I, I don't I'd lose my mind because they don't shut up. It would just turn into a shouting match with me versus whoever kept talking. I would or I'd finally put in my invention in which I could press the silent button. I don't know why they don't do that. 
It's the most obvious thing of all time. Hey, for a debate, just give the moderator a fucking, like, uh, uh, around the horn where they can just, boop, your mic's off, your time's up, boop, you're off. Duh. It's because they like the theatrics. Politics infuriates me. It really does. I know people think I'm it infuriates me. It's like I can't get too into it because I can always get bite my tongue, and it, it really gets my blood pressure going. Like, even talking to my dad about it, he's the perfect example. He just, like, everything is so one-sided. Just because of the side of the aisle you're on. It's disgusting. So is are you thinking about entering the field now? This is the most no. I've heard you no, no, no. no. You're still out. Why? So I can just then I'd be the center of it and I'd I'd ugh, no, never. Yeah, I, I still don't know why he did it, but <laughs> never. Good, whatever. Um so how was that pizza review though with Addison Ray? I like Addison. She's super nice. I people know me. I'm why it's like the J Cutler thing. If you're loyal to me and respond to me, no matter how big your star, I'll like basically go to war for you. I don't know Addison Ray very well, but if I texted her right now, she texts me back in two minutes. If I'm like, hey, can you do this? She'd be like, yes, no, whatever. If you do that, you have a foot soldier for life. She seems pretty true to what you see. Yes, she is. Very much so. Yeah. And right. somebody like that, I was asking her, and the thing is, it's nuts to me. When I started the BFF podcast, I, hadn't, I didn't know who that was. I had never heard the name. Uh -huh. She's arguably as big a star right now as there is in, in like, uh, the U.S. And imagine being in her shoes. Like, you're a nobody two years ago, and now you're the – how do you even – how do you do that? I can't imagine. Like, I've always said the Barstool rise it was not meteor meteoric. You know, it was slow. It's like one day five people recognize me. The next day six. Slow. Long. So I, I was always able to adjust. Don't get me wrong. There's things that still surprise me. And I can step back. I think I told you um, I was out to dinner. And I, this is a huge name drop, but I'm trying to say when I get like, oh, my God, that just happened. And um, so at the fight, Dan and I at, at the Jake Paul fight, we saw Michael Rubin, Sixers, Fanatics. And I've met him a bunch. Nice guy. Came up, small talk. He's got a place in the Hamptons. I'm like, And he had this huge party for Robert Kraft. They're close. And I was kind of busting his balls. I'm like, you didn't invite me. Like, that's my guy. How do you not invite me? He's like, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So he calls me like two weeks Two weeks later, he texted me. He's like, what's your number? He's like, Robert Kraft's trying to call you. I'm like, what? Phone rings. It's Bob Kraft. And he's like, David, I don't know how I didn't invite you to that party. He's like, I'm sick to my stomach. Like, I'm sick. Like, you should have been there. And it, I'm talking to him. And I don't even know if I can say this part. But he invites. He's like, I got a little get together coming up. He's like, you come to that. He's like, it's, it's like 100 people. It's small. Um, you know, I've got a little entertainment like the Rolling Stones will be playing. He's like, come to the park. <laughs> no. Wow. And, and, yeah, and I was with Silvana. I hung up, and she doesn't get it because she's not like Patriot. And those moments still, it's like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. like I hung up and like Robert Kraft called. She's like, who? I'm like, <laughs> Robert Kraft. So, you know, I get those. But her, she has all that happen times a million in the span of like six months, I, 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 and she's young. She's 20, 19. 21, maybe. I don't think she is 21. I thought we looked it up. Oh, I think she might be 20. Because yeah. It, 20, yeah. Yeah. So next week. Oh, wait, October 6th. That's it's week. just crazy, man. And she seems really well adjusted, sweet, nice girl. Honestly, that was my vibe. Like engaging, nice, sweet girl. Yeah, and like I said, everything she's done, it comes off that way. So that's good to know that that's really pretty much how it is. What you see is what you get. Yep. You're, she's a girl in Louisiana one day, and she's fucking yeah. a mega Very self-aware. Like, I, I, I got that vibe. Very self-aware. Like, I, I've done stuff with the, um, obviously, Dixie, who's another, like, TikToker, same age. Like, Addison seen more like... Um, Dixie seemed younger to me than Addison. Addison seemed pretty mature for her age. Mm -hmm. So did you go to this craft party yet or no? No, it hasn't happened. 
I don't think okay. I can go. It's during the week. Really? Yeah. Can we can we get him on the show? Maybe. Okay. Was there a follow up with the gas thing yet, or no? He mysteriously gone again from last week. The tweet him out at a certain Sworn New York City rest. Oh, bar. whatever it was. I I do have a tweet from. Uh, Jeez, I got so much shit. It's um, Rico. Well, you saw Rico. Oh, no, you were on that. Rico, uh, he said, what's next for gas? He's going to be hanging out with bin Laden. I think he's dead, but. He's confirmed dead. Uh, let's talk about Roman. Then we're going to do some inside bar stool, Then we'll get out of here, Dave. All right, Roman, hard dick business. Uh, saying the Pledge of Allegiance in your head, counting backwards from 10 doesn't work. But you got to last longer. So Roman swipes are clinically proven way to last longer in bed. They're effective, easy to use, fast acting, don't require a prescription. They can ship you swipes in a discreet, unmarked packaging. Each swipe pack is small enough to hide in your wallet for whenever you need it. Super easy to use. Just take the swipes out of the packet, swipe it on, let it dry, and you're good to go. Go to GetRoman.com slash Dave. You can get your first month of swipes for just 5 bucks when you choose a monthly plan. That's GetRoman.com slash Dave, the secret to longer lasting sex. Okay, inside Barstool. I saw uh, Willie Colon took a, uh, a morning show with Sirius. Is is he still with us, or is it like a joint venture? It's not a joint venture. I do think his contract or was – I mean, once we lost Sirius and the morning show went away, I think the, the wheels in motion of him opening up to what he wanted to do went into motion. Okay, so pretty much he's so he's no longer with us then. I don't know if that's official, official, but mm -hmm. if it's not, it's imminent, I believe. Okay, um, if something happened with the dozen last week with two of the teams. Like someone, like someone said, there was a freak out. Are you aware of any of this? No. I think Vibs Vibs's team tried to call Brandon Walker for the phone a friend, and the other team that they were playing had PFT filling in for Mark Titus. And Brandon saw that and then hung up. That led to Vibs getting really angry at Brandon. And then apparently he's just been having a bunch of freakouts around the office at like various people. Like I think he yelled at Mincy and then he told Brandon that it's when his sling show fails, they're just going to give him another one. So I think a lot of people just have beef with, with Vibs right now. It's the rumor mill. I haven't heard that. I, I did hear, which is our fault, not a Vibs. I've heard of one kind of Vibs freakout. And that's because a show, and I forget which one, launched at the same time as, like, lowering the bar. Like, they both were promoted at the same time, or Vibs did his own, and we launched something else. And I think he was upset about that, and rightfully so, from the way that I heard it. I don't know about this other jazz. Apparently, there was, he was yelling at, I think, Jen or somebody on that side about promotion of his show. I don't know. Yeah, maybe yeah, a little bit of I that. a different scenario. I don't know. A lot of people seem to have beef. Beef with, beef with the Vibs, apparently. Or Vibs has beef with them. Right, yeah, right. I, I agree with what I heard of Vibs being upset about the promotion timing. I, from what I heard relayed to me, he had a legitimate gripe. All right, well, put a pin in it. Maybe we'll get Jeff in here next do, week and do we'll we see what's going on. Do we want him in right now just to ask him? It's up to, it's here. Up to Dave if he's got the time. Yeah, I get the time. All right, All right, yeah. All right, so Vibs, have you been freaking out lately? Freaking out? Eddie said you were freaking out. I said I heard something happen with a dozen. That's all I heard. Oh, yeah. Uh, so PFT was on Team Smokin, and PFT – we. PFT's on Team Smokin, Team Gen XYZ. We used our lifeline, called Brandon Walker. He found out that PFT was on the other end. Hangs up. He said he was uh, looking out for his boy. Who's his boy? PFT. Okay. Which, PFT is on the opposing team. Yes. What, what's, what are they? Why are they connected? They're longstanding partners, and PFT filled in on a different team. So Brandon so PFT didn't answer is the on question. Brandon Walker's trivia team, but filled in on a different team. Right. That Correct. Doesn't seem like that should be legal. So we call Probably. Brandon Walker asking for help. He finds out PFT's on the other team. Hangs up. 
He, I, I don't, yeah. But so it, immediately, I thought he was reacting because he heard PFT was on another team and hung up as if, oh, PFT just sold me out, went to another team, hung up. It would have helped him. PFT is on your team. No, no, it, he, no. He's on Smokin. He's filling on Smokin. Uh, but Brandon was looking out for PFT. Right. Uh, yeah. And you freaked okay. out. So I thought he, yeah, I thought he would have helped us to get back at PFT, but other way around. Got it. So I freaked out on Brandon. Got it. So what about the Brandon, something about like sling? What was it? Like you, you said his sling show wasn't going to succeed and then they'll just give him another show. Is that true? Uh, I'm just the messenger, by the way. No, I, I said that you're, are you just going to rebrand your show to another show? So it, the freak out I heard about was some show, maybe it is that show, was promoted, launched at the same time that lowering the bar goes. No, 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 no. That, no. that had nothing to do with it? No. Uh, you were never mad about that? No. The, I've, I've been telling, well, no, I've been. I had your back on that one, but I get, I, uh, I. No, there, there was a. So the, the dozen and lowering the bar were going out within an hour of each other on YouTube. And with the algorithm, that doesn't really work. I mean, it hurts each other. You know what I mean? Right. So we were talking about that. So that was, a, that was an issue. Here comes Brown Walker. That issue, I agreed with you. Yeah. That was dumb on our part. Yeah. Did you freak out? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I freaked okay. out on Brandon for... At, that, and that was a freak out on Brandon too, on for the yeah on the dozen. So yeah, that was just two, the whole. So, that was just so the we, whole thing. Yeah. So we got just, two freak outs. Just the whole thing was with Brandon. Yeah. Well, no, the those are two different freak outs. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. Yes. Are they related freak outs? No. One I mean, was it, a programming freak out. Right. One was Brandon being a dirtbag freak out. Right. Yes. So two yes. different freak outs. Yes. Are those the only freak outs? Mincy, I heard. I don't what know happened to Mincy? I, it was. I was just sitting at my desk. I was, oh, I, I was just sitting at my desk. Mincy uh, didn't didn't drink the Capri Sun on lowering the bar. He said he couldn't drink it, and I said I can do 17 weeks of fantasy football, but you can't drink the the Capri Sun for 15 seconds. Why can't he? Because of the he diet? said sugar. He said there was sugar in it. I and said, is All right. he allergic to sugar? Or is the no? Diet? It was diet. It was diet. Okay. I'll, I two and you do the fantasy with him. Yeah. I'm on two legitimate freakouts from Vibs. The one of him not picking up, that seems more content-ish. Yeah, that, that, I don't that, know that, if that's... that was a real freakout, but that doesn't, like, I don't necessarily understand, like, what, like whatever, PFT. I won't, like, going on a different team, I think, is kind of dog shit. But that, that's more of a content. That shouldn't. So I got two very real freakouts and one that, to me, seemed like it should have been kind of tongue-in-cheek content. Mm -hmm. Do we have more freakouts? That's it. I mean, for how long have you been in New York now? Three years. So you just waited? Was it like the kettle like exploded or something? I just. <laughs> three freak outs quick. I just. Uh, I don't expect to hear that. Vibs is freaking out on people. Really? It's like, that's weird. I, I'd just been asking for certain things and I just felt like I had no control. And asking people, who? Just people behind the scenes about like the YouTube thing and like, hey, can we change this? I think it's a problem. And I just felt like no one was listening and I just mm. had no control. That happens a lot. Everything I was complaining about Are you afraid of is me? pretty normal. Are you afraid of me? I'm not afraid of... Like, before you freak out, if I think somebody has, like, a legitimate... Like, those two things are very... Well, the Mincy, you can't predict. Like, Mincy, just suck it up and fucking have a sip of Curry, son. So, fine with that. The other, I, I, I would agree, that's crazy. Erica actually is the one who brought it to me. And she, yeah. she, she was like, I agree. We're pretty, I feel like lucid in what we we don't just she's like so vibs freaked out. i'm like about what she's like i kind of have his back he's like of course that makes perfect sense but and i'm not saying i'm the easiest person like if you brought that to me somebody i i would have escalated like that makes sense it's I, common sense my problem was i didn't go to you or erica earlier and i let it build but i because it, they it, also get bothered like the production all they get a lot of people coming at them so like things come up and down even i lose track of stuff but, I mean, coming in here, it's like you hear – I haven't heard that in three years. Like, Vibs is just freaking out on people. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Is it gonna, what's, well, what's happening next? Is that why we got the security at the front? 
Um, <laughs> because Vibs has lost his mind? I, I, I wouldn't say I'm afraid. I just – I don't know if this goes into being – I don't think I'm good enough. I don't know if I'm good enough. Yeah, but it. that show does decent. So it's like it, it, it's enough numbers and, and obviously doing it. So I get that. It makes no sense to launch shows within a half an hour. I mean, I got – I don't want to, no, not mad. I, Austin, like we released it on my personal channel the other day, like, um, advisors 20 minutes before pizza. Correct. So I, I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? Like we need it either earlier or promote. It's like, you, you can't let something breathe for 20 minutes. That's kind of common sense. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know the, the brand one. I don't get, that seems like a content thing. Uh, like, I mean, I called the do on the well, fucking, it was, it was, so it happened the night before and then we got into work and then I was just in a shitty mood and then it was just it kind of escalated from I guess the only good thing is it's like you're taking that show that seriously like you're that, that mad about it I don't know what Brandon's doing in here I mean I think it's weird in a general that you yeah yeah okay all right well watch out yeah I just <laughs> fucking Vibs has had enough apparently <laughs> so is Brandon <laughs> what do you mean he just said I guess I can't defend myself and slam the door what is that? Oh, mean? I didn't. No, uh, no, no. I thought. I thought right? he said it. No, no. I thought he just said he wasn't needed because Vibs wasn't. Oh, that and, sounded like it was in jest. But no, I, no, no, I, will, no. I will say this: the content thing. I accused Brandon of being a baby for hanging up the phone. I think I was being a baby for calling him a baby. Yeah, that's content. That's yeah. that's the, the moment. Those aren't real freakouts. They're getting real mad at in the middle. People get mad in like the dozen. Who fucking cares? Right. But no, I. I, I I'll pitch the show right now. At, I should probably leave, but no. Lowering the bar is just. I think it's an honest show where it's honest reactions from honest show well it's honest i think that's barstool that's all you can ask for an honest show go I ahead i think that's barstool it's okay, honest yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. real reactions yeah so i think that's i think that's good and we bring in people from uh the office it's like a stool scenes but a quicker version of it you're talking so, lowering the bar lowering the bar yeah, yeah. i think everyone knows what lowering the bar is well i just wanted you to know that i would i would die for that show so i'm, I'm just trying to okay. promote it which which i appreciate and take it seriously and everybody should take it that seriously and everybody in that situation should complain if it's like what the fuck why are you putting the dozen out like 20 minutes after i put out i get it, it. well it, and it was hurting jeff d low too so yeah. jeff d low and i had a conversation about it and it's it's fixed yeah. now i mean yeah. i said that to be honest i still think it's nuts that that the dozen is going right now i think it's back far too soon i've said that before it's a great show but i would have let people i would let it breathe it felt like we ran that second season back like 10 seconds after the fact anyhow um any other grievances jeff i mean not now's the time none none I had a, yeah, I had a he meeting. let it all out. He exploded I, on people. Well, I just had a meeting with the behind the, yeah. I had a meeting with the behind the scenes people, and I was like, obviously something's wrong if I'm, if I'm mad at Brandon Walker and Mincy, just the two Southern well, dudes that are like. Oh, Mincy won't have a fucking sip of a. <laughs> well, I mean. Capri it, Sun. Come on, Mincy. He's in ketosis. You got to give him a break. Keto please. Yeah. Please. All right. But, yeah, it's so, weird to hear. Yeah, but uh, Vibs is just going off on people <laughs> i was uh, just trying to make it just yeah, trying to grow I, I listen you 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 were right you, you, you two of the three i'd say you were within your rights for sure okay. thank all you right. there thank he you is Vibs, loose cannon uh well while we're talking about the dozen big match tonight yeah this will probably come out before so maybe after i don't know no it, it'll come out after you guys can we, talk well about it. we got fucked because that's me putting content ahead, like the <laughs> the locker room was upset a little bit. <laughs> it's news to me. <laughs> well, well, I, I I shouldn't say that, but we. You I know, knew it, I knew going in, I was calling to do as a lifeline. All right, I knew <laughs> I was doing it. They did the college basketball category. That's his wheelhouse. So I doubled it. Knowing I was going to call him, Jeff D, I don't tell the rules low, is like, you can't use your fucking phone a friend on a double. So I kept waiting for the next category to call him to do on. Nothing came up till we were almost out of categories. So I called him on the second to last. I wanted to use the double on college basketball, and I wanted to use the phone a friend on a one we already had the answer for. I knew it was Priest Holmes. I, you got mad at me. You're like, don't say it. It's like, I. It's our question. I know what the answer is. So I fucked I, that up. I, I was wrong on that. Yeah. So I, but I thought we we're running out of time. So I'm a slave to content. Sorry. You're right. That's literally what it was. We we lost. We died by the bit. Live and die by the bit. We yeah. And we died. I mean, I knew I was doing the bit. I was running out of time to do the bit. 
I know. But in hindsight, if we would have saved it for uh, the 12th round, we'd probably win. Yeah, yeah but it could have almost been over by then, right? Like, if they missed it, I think it's done. What gets me, too, and it's a dozen you're right, I thought, like, you always think, like, if they missed our question, we won. But you forget about the steel component. Steel, yeah, but that's what I was thinking. I'm like, I, if they miss, it's like I thought it was out of time. It's calling the do now or never. And you were getting that in no matter what. I was on the phone when I was on the phone earlier, scrambling to get his phone number. Oh, man. Um, well, we'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back. Um, the argue, speaking of arguments, though, did you see Tank going at it with someone in, a, in the subway? Yeah, I read one of the comments, and it's so funny. I think it was on the Reddit page I saw it because I was looking. I love sometimes when there's funny shit going. See, they are creative at times. Um, but it's like imagine being in an argument with, like, this humongous man yelling at the subway, and, like, four minutes in, suddenly everybody is screaming his internet nick, nickname, chanting, like, Tank, Tank, Tank. It's like, how does that happen? But yeah, hilarious. <laughs> Tank is Did so Did you get funny. the background from him at all? No, Tank. We talked about briefly. He was mad about the train. I mean, he's fucking screaming, and I think the lady was probably like, "Why is this man screaming at the train?" Well, that's how he built his entire following. And then, are you aware of this Florida State proposal, kid? He was actually a barstool athlete. Yeah, funny. I mean, come on. I, I will say we talked about in the rundown. There's a chance he didn't even know they lost. Like honestly, I don't know if he's. I, I'd love to talk to him. And I want to get those two, the cheerleader. We probably should have had him this week. I'd love to get the cheerleader. And I believe the gay friend who I think would probably be like, they, for some reason, they just strike me as very funny people in the way they handled it. But there is a chance that guy didn't know. Like, if you're focused, you got your family there probably, you know you're about to do it, The Jacksonville State or whatever is on their own 40 you're not thinking they're scoring. You're, I guarantee you his mind is like, I'm about to propose. Are you watching the play or are you focused on the proposal? There's a chance he didn't even know what happened, honestly. Well, yeah, you got to get the ring in order. It's, right, that's what I mean. You're like, What are the odds they're just going to throw a Hail Mary in school? You're probably like, I'm about to propose. So you're definitely focused on that. So maybe he didn't even know. But it is hilarious in hindsight. What a story. I think he quit Barstool Athletes. Did he? he took it out of his bio. Damn. We were skewering him. He deserved to be skewered. I mean, sometimes people are saying you shame your athletes. Is that come on? If you don't think that's hilarious, I don't know. I, I got nothing for you. <laughs> tough days of Florida State. T- tough days. I mean, you proposed in one of the uh, all-time college football plays. Well, I hope he's still with us. I hope maybe sounds yeah. like we'll, he, he's not, but we can get him back. Yeah, we'll I get mean, him back. you have to have some self-awareness how funny and unique it is. Like to lose in a but I mean, what are you going to do? The it, 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 your your pot committed, like I said at that point. I don't think you can call an audible. Then, like I bet if they lo- he picked a game, they have to win. There's no way Florida State's going to lose that game. He picked an automatic W, and yeah, it was closer than you thought, but it still looked like it was done. He had to be pot committed. He had to be like, okay, okay it's time to propose. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't watch the play, honestly. You know what? Maybe he sat there and was like, hey, we might not win a game this year, so I got to do it at one of these. He picked an automatic not, dub. Yeah, maybe. If we're not, yeah, if we're not going to beat Jacksonville State. Um, I saw a uh, former employee, Mantis, he received oral for the first time this weekend. Yeah, he, he texted me about that. I think he was doing a bit <laughs> because he tweeted it already. What did he text you? He texted me, thanks for the life. I got head for the first time today. I was like, congrats. I don't know if he would send that to a bunch of people just to see the responses because I guess he mentioned it on Twitter beforehand. There's another caveat to the story. So apparently it was paid for. He was in Vegas, and it was paid for. The amount that he paid is alarming. I'll let you – do you want to guess how much? Alarming high or low? Alarmingly high. 100 bucks. $8,400 for head. Jesus. the other, Mantis have eighty four hundred dollars. <laughs> the other caveat is that he had to wear a condom. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're getting like paying for it, you do have to wear a condom. And apparently, there was like twelve hundred dollar hand jobs involved. He said all this on like a live stream after he was explaining how how it went down. Is he being serious or is he joking? A hundred percent serious. Eighty four hundred. That's fucking. That's insane. crazy. And then uh, just a couple more things here. Nick Merckx, he's now promoting a different gambling company. Our contract ended with him. 
That doesn't surprise me. Okay. So just he's done. He'll probably stick it to us by doing, but we didn't get much results. So. Okay. And then anything you said, you knew the Biz TNT thing was going to go down. Yeah, I, I've known about that for a while. Big deal for him. Congrats for him. Is with is he with Gretzky? Am I making that part up? I didn't see any of the announcements because it broke during the show, but um, they announced like a whole big lineup. So good for him. Yeah. They previously announced Wayne Gretzky, Rick Toshe. Yeah, good for him. I mean, he's electric, Anson so Carter. he deserves it. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, you're right. It is Gretzky, studio analyst. Anson yeah. Carter, Gretzky. Wow, that's awesome. And then, um, yeah, probably we should have bounced it last week coming in, but uh, if you, you know, 9 11, obviously, the, all the large content with his wife and everything. So um, go, go, go check that out, too. So that's all I have, Dave. Do you have anything else? Nope. That's it, Eddie. All right. That's it for this week, right. everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.